So AI at its core is also about allowing us to deal with the increasingly digital world around us and reason with all of that data. At Microsoft, we believe that AI can help transform the way society works to deal with some of our greatest challenges. For example, sustainability of sustainably feeding growing populations to ensure resilient water supplies, to stem the widespread and ongoing loss of biodiversity, and mitigate and adapt to changing climate. And this is why, with this promise of being able to tackle these incredibly important problems that we announced a few months ago, a program called AI for Earth. And now it's my pleasure to invite Lucas Joppa, the chief environmental scientist of Microsoft, to tell us a little about AI for Earth and the magic of AI and the geographical information systems coming together to power this. Lucas? Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Joseph. Okay, so the reason I'm here today is because as Microsoft's chief environmental scientist, I'm definitely an AI guy. But, I mean, when you're, when you're uh, leading a program called AI for Earth, you kind of have to be, right? But most of the data sets that I deal with on a daily basis are inherently geospatial. And that means that I spend a lot of my time dealing with geographic information systems, or GIS, built by a company called Esri. And so as we began building up our AI for Earth program, it became quickly clear that converting raw geospatial data into actionable information becomes quickly difficult when the density of that data is growing as exponentially as it currently is today from geospatial systems like GPS tracking devices, IoT deployments, and this really rapidly growing constellation of high resolution imaging platforms like satellites and drones. And so over the past year, we've been working with our partners at Esri on something that you can think of as GeoAI, uh, integration of Microsoft's AI platform with Esri's GIS uh, software to really empower organizations of all types to really get out ahead of this incredible growth curve in geospatial data. So to show you what I mean by that, I wanna pick up where my colleague Mary left off, her demo using training deep neural networks to classify high resolution images and show that we can actually run that model and execute that model from within Esri's GIS or, uh, software. And so what you're looking at here is Esri's premium desktop environment where you can manage, analyze, and visualize all types of geospatial data, as well as show multiple different data sources for an identical location side by side, like I've built here for a location in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Now, I just wanna walk you through what I'm showing here in these four views. So in the upper left-hand corner, we have the image that we want to classify. In the bottom right-hand corner, we have the results from Mary's model. Now, immediately next to that, I'm showing those same results, but this time as a mix of probabilities across all the classes that the model's trying to predict. And that's really helpful for me as a data scientist to be able to almost literally see inside how the model's thinking, where it's going wrong, and what I might be able to do to improve it. And then, of course, it's always helpful to be able to compare the results of your model with the data that it was originally trained on. And that's why in the upper right-hand panel here, I'm showing the land cover map provided by the Chesapeake Conservancy. Now, I think most of you will probably agree that these results look pretty good. But the real power of this approach is that you can actually use this same algorithm to classify land cover in places that it's never seen before. Like this location here in Oakland County, Michigan. And so as you can see from this empty panel in the top right, this is actually one of the many locations around the world where we simply don't have any, any data to train our algorithm on. 
But that's actually not really a problem anymore because as you can see in these bottom panels, with just the click of a button, Esri's GIS software is able to immediately reach out and begin communicating with Microsoft's AI services, classifying that image in real time into categories like forests and fields, water, and impervious surfaces like roads and houses. Now, as you can see, our model still isn't perfect. Right? We still have a lot of training left to do before we're able to perfectly classify every feature in every location. But the reason that this integration between AI and GIS has already been such a game changer for us is because we suddenly become so much more efficient. So for instance, if we want to be able to compute a one meter, one meter resolution land cover map like the one that I'm showing here, but for the entire United States, that means that we'd have to crunch through something like on the order of 10 trillion pixels all in one go. And so even with modern AI infrastructure, that might take a little bit of time. But instead, by using AI on demand like we're doing here, we can now compute just what we want, when, and where we want to compute it. And that really does free up organizations of all kinds to spend way less time on data wrangling and a whole lot more time on data insights and taking action. So there's just one more thing that I wanna say here, which is that through some of these demos, we've been spending a lot of time talking about image classification. But Esri's world of GIS is much richer than that. In fact, it's filled with all sorts of structured data types that Microsoft's AI platform can help classify and make predictions about. And so now I'm really pleased to welcome Omar Mar, the lead for Esri's AI practice, to come and tell us just a little bit more about this emerging field of GeoAI. Welcome, Omar. Thank you. Hello everyone. What if we can predict road accidents before they happen? What if we can optimize the ambulance car allocation based on these predictions to save more lives? Wouldn't that be fantastic? This is an example for what Microsoft AI, together with ArcGIS, can bring together to tap into the power of Geo AI. Let's demystify how this happens. First, we start by exploring spatial patterns in our data. We add data layers, like accident locations and road network layer, which is a data set of the road features, like number of lanes or maximum speed or direction. Notice the screen here. Many accidents are falling really very near to intersections. So we add proximity to intersections as a feature to our model. We use hotspot analysis to explore areas with statistically significant high or low values compared to their surroundings. And we use space-time cubes to navigate back and forth, exploring accident rates as they increase or decrease across space and time. Second, we look for, confirm, and fix spatial data anomalies. So please have another look to the screens. You'll notice many accidents are falling away from road links. We need to fix this. We use a technique called road snapping that comes within ArcGIS to associate these accidents to the nearest road link. What's really cool about this is when we start associating every single accident to specific road features, like double versus single lanes, the direction, the maximum speed, you name it. Adding temporal data features as well, like time of the day, day of the week, weekend versus weekday, rush hour versus not, etc. We call this spatial feature extraction, something RJS is perfectly designed to do. What about the features that we'll be using in our model? We start experimenting with different feature selection techniques to see which subset of features would perfectly fit for our models. And then, we start training our machine learning model to predict accidents. We use Azure Machine Learning for this because it comes with an amazing plethora of learning algorithms that we can train and experiment with to see which of these yields the highest prediction accuracy in a short amount of time, all in the cloud. 
Now, there is a question here. After some iterations, we end up deploying these algorithms into production. But do we stop here? The answer is no. Prediction is just a part of intelligence. Reasoning, taking decisions, and doing actions are equally important parts. ArcGIS can help facilitate this end-to-end -end cycle by facilitating geospatial actions and consuming the trained models as if they are plugins to take smart geospatial actions. In our case, it could be optimizing the ambulance allocation to reach faster to the areas where we predict high amount of accidents. At Esri, we are very excited to work closely with Microsoft to bring these capabilities to a broad range of industries and to empower every organization to tap into the power of Geo AI. Thank you. The applications at the intersection of AI and geographical information systems are just amazing. It's a power to see with data. Remember, a satellite image or an aerial image is just a bunch of data, a bunch of bits, but it's only with AI now that you can see roads in that. You can classify land use, and then you go look at all of the data that's in a geographical information system that's actually structured data, like traffic patterns and roads. Then when you apply AI on top of it, what you can do is just simply amazing. So to enable this integration, we are today announcing a collaboration between S3 and Microsoft. We are starting with launching a data science virtual machine, which we call the Geo AI virtual machine on Azure, to help integrate AI and GIS development. So the virtual machine itself comes with all the popular tools for AI, tools like R and Python and editors and others, which are very common. And then it integrates with ArcGIS. So ArcGIS is from S3. And so data scientists can now compose them and build very, very powerful applications. And using R and Python, they can access the data in these geographical information systems and deploy really powerful models combining both and, and really have GOA applications. So in conclusion, I want to make this point. It's not about if you're going to use AI, but when and how. Microsoft's AI platform is there for you when you decide to. It helps you build systems of intelligence with the power of the cloud on all types of data. You can do data transformations, data wrangling with big data, GPUs. You can use open source tools. You can deploy anywhere, on any cloud, on the IoT edge, even to Excel. You can build cognitive applications and conversational systems. You can integrate natural language processing and vision and speech and knowledge, all of these into applications and build intelligent conversational systems and bots. And you can develop and deploy AI solutions for common business scenarios and make a difference with AI for societal impact. 